Hello and welcome to sentence diagramming exercise number 10, more conjunctions and multiple modifiers. I hope you did the warm up already because we're going to go over it now. Conjunction, junction, what is your function? Well, it is hooking up words, phrases, and clauses if you know your schoolhouse rock. Uh, you could also say something like joining things together. Hey, fun fact. The roots, the Latin roots in here have some meaning. Junct means to join, and co or con can mean with or together. So literally, when you are con a conjunction, so literally then a conjunction is joining things together, joining things up with each other. Can you think of a reason for why we are diagramming conjunctions on dotted lines? I'm mostly just curious to see what you're thinking there. Uh, there, there could be a number of ways of doing it, to, for doing it that way. To call attention to the things that are being joined um, because the, the conjunction only shows a relationship. It's not a thing or a quality in and of itself. Those are reasons why it might be on dotted lines rather than something rather than on a solid line. I don't know. I don't know why exactly. Uh, number three, what other words can be conjunctions or specifically coordinating conjunctions besides and? Hint, think about fanboys' words. Hopefully you've learned this at some point in your life history already. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. They all join things together. Well, the relationships they indicate are different. They're all doing joining, and they're joining things of equal value. That's what it means to say they're coordinated. All right, let me erase and scroll down, and we'll move on to the practice sentences. All right, I'm leaving three not visible right now to help me remember to erase and scroll again. Please remember, we label the parts of each sentence above the appropriate word first, then we label the part of speech of each word below, and then we diagram each sentence. Step one, sentence one, the very hungry and lean caterpillar soon became a fat and pudgy caterpillar. Shout out to Eric Carl and his book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Uh, there's a, an Eric Carl museum of all of his art in uh, somewhere in Massachusetts. Go there if you get a chance. Um, for the young or young at heart. Okay, this sentence has no prepositional phrases in it, so there's nothing to put in parentheses. The subject is caterpillar, the predicate is became, and became is a little bit tricky because it seems like it would be an like it might be an action verb, but it's actually a linking verb. And here's how I can tell: because caterpillar became what? Caterpillar. That's going to be a predicate nominative because this caterpillar and that caterpillar are actually the same caterpillar. And if the two things are the same, that must mean that, that's a, that this one's a predicate nominative. And if that's a predicate nominative, this must be a linking verb, guys. So became is a linking verb. And if you have trouble remembering that, then you should just memorize it. Tell yourself five times before you go to bed every night. Became is a linking verb. Became is a linking verb. Became is a linking verb. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do parts of speech because there's no indirect object here. The is an article. Very is an adverb. It tells us how hungry the caterpillar was. That's an adjective. And is a conjunction. Lean is an adjective. Caterpillar is a noun. Soon is an adverb telling us when the predicate happens. And that's a linking verb. We talked about that already. A uh is an article. Fat is an adjective. And is a conjunction. Pudgy is an adjective, caterpillar is a noun. Okay, now there's some fun stuff going on in this diagram. Some of it's review, a little bit of it what you saw last week or last time around, some of it won't be. All right, ready, here we go. Caterpillar, that's the subject. Became, there's the predicate. Backward slanting line for a linking verb, per rule of sentence diagram number one, and then caterpillar is the predicate nominative. Caterpillar became caterpillar. Okay, what do we know about this first caterpillar? It is very hungry and lean. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just call it the caterpillar. We're also gonna say that it is hungry 
and we're going to say that it is lean. We're also going to say that it is hungry and lean, and that's not new. But here's what might be new for you. One, very. Very is what's called an intensifier. Uh, and that means that it, it intensifies uh, something else that's already, some quality that already exists. So the caterpillar isn't just hungry, the caterpillar is very hungry. A small child might say that, that the character, the caterpillar is not just like, that they're not just hungry, but they're very, very hungry. The, or that they're very, very, very hungry. Or very, 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 very hungry. Because young children have limited vocabularies, and so they're just going to add intensifiers rather than picking a more precise word to begin with. A lot of us do the same thing with the F word sometimes. We're just like, I am very hungry. I am really hungry. I am really at hungry. It might be better to just, you know, want to create a stronger picture in the reader, the listener's mind might say that we're ravenous instead or starving or something like that. Um, but they, it's an intensifier. It intensifies the word that's to come next. And here's how we diagram intensifiers. It's tough because an adverb, it's got to go on a diagonal line, right? So we're going to have a diagonal line Oh, but I just drew a diagonal line that's parallel to the diagonal line that I already drew for hungry. How do I connect them? With a little line like this called a spacer. Or that's what I call it anyway. You can call it something else if you want. Franklin. Okay. But this is how I'm going to do it. The very hungry and lean caterpillar. And I like doing it like this with a spacer because that means I can add more varies if I wanted to. Like if I wanted to say a very, very, very hungry caterpillar, I could add another intensifier to the first very, and then another one to the second, and then another one, and then another one, and then another one. Okay, and I hope that you can see that this doing it this way, by drawing a diagonal line and connecting it to the other modifier with a spacer, lets us add as many intensifiers as we need to if we are people of limited vocabulary. But for right now, there's just one. The very hungry and lean caterpillar became, actually soon became, that's an adverb, says when, describes the predicate, a fat and pudgy caterpillar. And there you go. By the way, if you wanted, and here's some like next level ish here. If you wanted very to be describing lean, so like that we're supposed to be thinking that the caterpillar is not only very hungry, but also very lean, you could take this spacer and you could draw it so that it connected, move my dotted line a little bit, so that it connected both of the words, what? Like that, if you really, really wanted to. I am fine with very just describing hungry. The caterpillar, I don't think this caterpillar is very lean. I think it's just a regular amount of lean. But it is very hungry. So I'm going to leave my diagram just like that. Okay, let's move on to number two. Without a doubt, single period weeks are very stressful for student and faculty members of our community. Okay, the first thing you should do is parenthesize prepositional phrases, identify the subject, identify the predicate. Let's do it. Do yourself and, I mean, do your own work and then come back and check with me. Okay, so uh, there's what I got for prepositional phrases. Without a doubt is a prepositional phrase. For student and faculty members is a prepositional phrase. Of our community is a prepositional phrase. And the subject is this. Notice how this makes it easy to see this easier to see the subject and predicate. Weeks is the subject. R is the predicate. It's going to be a linking verb. Weeks are what? Weeks are stressful. Okay, stressful. It's a that answers the question. What is it? A predicate adjective, predicate nominative, or direct object? Well, we know that R is a linking verb, so it can't be a direct object. 
stressful. Let's see, is that a noun or an adjective? That's an adjective. And what is it that's stressful? The weeks. So we have an adjective following the predicate describing the subject. Oh, it's a predicate adjective. There we go. Subject, predicate, predicate, adjective. Question. Uh, is there anyone or anything to whom or for whom this action is being done? Well, we could say that student and faculty members or members of our community are the people to whom or for whom this is, this is stressful. So we could label that as an indirect object. If you, want to be the, if you want to be that person who says like, hey, indirect objects only happen with action verbs. I understand. So I'm just going to write mem members there as the IO, but I'll, I'll put a question mark by it. You know what? It's not going to change our diagram at all. It'll be OK. I think it's OK whether you say that that's a, an indirect object, because it is to whom or for whom it's stressful. Um, but if you want to say, like, oh, indirect objects only happen after action verbs, then I guess I kind of understand. OK. Uh, please take some time to identify all the parts of speech in this sentence. Do your work, then check back with me. I hope this is what you got. Without is a preposition. A is an article. Doubt is a noun. Single period is an adjective. Weeks is a noun. R is a linking verb. Very is an adverb. Stressful is an adjective. For is a preposition. Student is an adjective. And is a conjunction. Faculty is an adjective. Members is a noun. Of is a preposition. Our is an adjective. It's a possessive. And community is a noun. Okay, now we're going to look at things that are on the main line. Weeks are stressful and maybe members too to diagram first. Why don't you do that while I uh, get our video back and do it too. So here's the main line so far. Weeks are and stressful. Since uh, if we're thinking about the members of our community, student and faculty members, as an indirect object, we should better diagram that next. So please pause the video again and do that. Okay, this is what that looks like for members, for what kind of members? Student and faculty members. Now, I've, we rushed over this a little bit before, but it's really important to recognize that student and faculty are adjectives here. They can be nouns. Those words can be nouns. Student can be a noun. Faculty can be a noun. But remember that parts of speech are not set in stone, ladies and gentlemen. If you are thinking about what part of speech a word is, that means that you are thinking about what role it is playing or how it is being used in the sentence. And that can change. In this case, it is clear that student and faculty are describing what kind of members we are talking about. And if they are describing what kind of members we are talking about, they're answering the question, what kind? They're modifying a noun. They must be adjectives. So we get a diagram, so we get this going on in our diagram. For student and faculty members. Hey, while we're at it, what kind of members are we talking about? Well, student and faculty members, Mr. Day. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, but what else? Members uh, of our community. And so we're going to diagram of our community next. 
Pause and do that. Okay, Funk Soul brothers and sisters, that's where that goes. Of our community describes members, just like student and faculty both describe members. And we can cross a bunch of words off now. You know what, I want to diagram very before we go any further because I'm afraid I'm going to forget it. How stressful? Very stressful. Very, there it's acting as an intensifier telling us just how stressful it is. Okay. Just a few more words here. I want to do single period next. Single period is, tells us what kind of weeks we're talking about. There's a hyphen there, so that means that's how we can treat it as a single word. Is there a space between them? No. Okay, so it's pretty clearly a single word. And now, without a doubt, question. Is that going to describe the weeks or is it going to describe something else? Well, sometimes when a group of words, like, a, like this prepositional phrase, is set off at the beginning of a sentence by a comma, which this one is, sometimes that describes the subject. A lot of the time it actually describes everything else that's going on in the sentence, and when it's doing that we diagram it off of the predicate. And here's how you can tell. By asking yourself this question. Can we move it to the end of the sentence? Single period weeks are very stressful for student and faculty members of our community, comma, without a doubt. Yes, we can do it. If it moves around, if we can move it around in the sentence, it must be an adverb, because adverbs can move around in sentences in Latin, too. That nihil, if something is never going to be or never going to happen, that nihil can go just about anywhere in that sentence. If it can move around in the sentence, it's an adverb, and there's only one really good place for an adverb to go. Well, I guess we have an adverb coming off of stressful, but we were thinking about, like, is it, is it the weeks that are stressful without a doubt? Yes. Are they stressful without a doubt? Yes. Are they stressful without a doubt? Yes. Look, it's describing everything. And if it's describing everything in a sentence, we're going to take it and diagram it off of the predicate. So I hope your diagram looks like that when all is said and done. Okay, why don't you start working on sentence number three? I can't even read it out loud for you because I can't see it, so I think you should do that while I erase. Please do your work and then check in with me. Again, start by identifying the parts of speech. Excuse me, start by identifying the parts of sentence. The first thing you've got to do is parenthesize prepositional phrases. So at this point, like theoretically, you have paused the video, done your work, and you're about to go over it now. Because that's what I'm ready for. Well, I mean, not ready yet, but you know what I mean.
These sentences are starting to get a little complicated. Here are the prepositional phrases. Of the wicked witch, of the east, and then in great and terrible danger. Now, your sentence is going to look a little bit different if you just decided that wicked witch of the east was just all one noun. That does simplify things, and you could do that, I think, because wicked witch of the east, that's like, that's her title. That's her, kind of her name. Um, so if you're, everything that you've done that has to, if you, if you treated that as a single word, then everything that you're doing with those words, wicked witch of the east, is just going to be simplified a great deal. And that's fine. The subject of the sentence is killing. The predicate is placed. Dorothy is a direct object. It answers the question, what place is an action verb? Dorothy is a noun. That's it for the parts of the sentence. The is an article, accidental is an adjective, yet is a conjunction. Fortunate is an adjective. Killing is a noun. I hope you're learning to read your footnotes. Yet is the Y in fanboys, by the way. If you didn't catch that, I hope you were like, oh yeah, I should have known that. Yes, yes, okay, so think a little more next time. All right, killing. Of the wicked witch of the East, of is a preposition, the is an article, wicked witch is a noun, of is a preposition, the is an article, East is a noun. You know it's a noun because it's preceded by the article the. That's what articles do, they point at nouns. That's how you can tell that East is a noun. Placed is a verb, Dorothy is a direct object, it's a noun. In is a preposition, great is an adjective, and is a conjunction, terrible is an adjective, danger is a noun. Okay, so here's the main line. Killing, placed, Dorothy. Notice how simple that looks now that we've got it on the main line. Killing, placed, Dorothy. That's what's going on in this sentence. We've got a bunch of words to describe the killing. It is an accidental yet fortunate killing, the accidental yet fortunate, right? Conjunctions are joined on joined things on dotted lines right now. Who's killing or what kind, which killing are we talking about? The killing of the wicked witch of the east. And if you treat wicked witch of the east just as one thing, it would just be of the and then wicked witch of the east going on a single horizontal line. That would be fine. Place Dorothy in great and terrible danger tells us how it placed her. What is the manner in which she was placed? How was she placed? That how is a question that is answered by an adverb, so it's going to describe the predicate. It does not describe Dorothy. Is Dorothy in great and terrible danger? Yes, she is now, but she was placed there. And the placing is what we're talking about in this sentence, not, not Dorothy. Okay, so in danger, great and terrible, great and terrible, adjectives joined with a conjunction describing danger, in great and terrible danger telling us how she was placed. Okay. Yeah, they are getting a little bit trickier, but it's okay. I think that you're up for it. Use your teacher to help you. Find me. Ask me some questions. Let's do some practice.